Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. So in the hobbyist space there are mainly two kinds of lasers. There are the cheap diode lasers that you can have be had for like less than 200 bucks for a whole kit. Or there are the a bit more expensive CO2 lasers, which in turn can also cut a lot more. Now Endurance Lasers reached out to me to do a review on their 10 watt laser diode. And with 10 watts you can do a lot actually, compared to the like 2 or 3 watts that most cheap Chinese laser engravers have, with 10 watts you are already bridging the gap towards CO2 lasers and you can start actually cutting stuff like plywood and acrylics. So in this video I'm gonna put the 10 watt endurance laser to the test and see what you can do with it. So just to be fully transparent, Endurance Lasers did send me the laser unit, but I'm in no way obligated to have a positive uh, opinion or anything, so everything I will say in this video is totally 100% my own opinion, and they are also not paying me in any way for this video. So I already mentioned that we're going to take a look at the 10 watt version, but they also have a whole bunch of other uh, wattages starting at like 2 watts, uh, going up to 10 watts, and then you can combine multiple 10 watt units to get up to 30 watts of engraving power. Of course the prices also scale up matching. Uh, the 10 watt unit can be had, depending on which kind of sale they have going on, for around 600 bucks. Now, for just a simple laser upgrade for a 3D printer, that is a lot of money. So for that price it better be really damn good. So in the box you get the laser diode with the heatsink and you get also a controller box and a power supply plus some nice protective laser goggles so that you don't burn your eyes out. Just taking a quick look around the unit, you can see that it is quite simple and it does feel more like a prototype though than an actual production unit. Uh, for example the controller box is just 3D printed and while you can totally ship 3D printed parts as final products, this print didn't come out all that great. It kind of lifted off the build plate probably, so it looks more like a prototype than something that you would pay $600 for. So, since it is marketed towards hobbyists that are gonna put it into their own builds which are probably kinda janky anyways, it's not gonna be that big of a deal in the end. So since it only comes with the laser itself, you do have to have some kinda way of moving that laser around. Now it is really easy and convenient to just add this laser module to basically any kind of 3D printer. I put it onto my CR10 since that gives me kind of a larger build space where I can engrave and I just printed a very simple quick release system for it so it can easily swap the extruder with the laser within just a couple of seconds. Um, I'm gonna have those files linked down below. I just took an existing quick release system for the CR10 and made my own adapter plate for the laser. The module has four tapped holes in the back so you can easily screw it to basically whatever you want. And that mounting bracket is basically the only thing that you really have to do. Other than that you just connect up two wires to your controller board to some kind of PWM signal. And one way that actually doesn't even require you to modify the firmware is that you can use the header for your part cooling fan. That way you just connect it up to the fan header and by using M106 and M107 you can turn it on and off and you can also add an S command behind the M106 which is going to be your PWM like modulation so you can set it to any brightness you want. Now you can also hook it up to a dedicated pin on your board and use some kind of laser integration in your firmware like for a smoothie bar for example there is a laser part that you can activate and that is probably going to give you slightly better performance and might be a little bit f faster but it is way more convenient to just hook it up to the fan header. And while the system comes with a power supply included since you're probably not going to be using the heated bed and the extruder while you're laser cutting the power supply of your printer most likely has enough power as well to power the laser. So I just hooked up my laser to the printer power supply directly as it has way more than enough uh, power to supply that laser as well which 
leaves my whole electronics even smaller. Then with the physical build completed, the only thing we need is to get all the funny shapes that we want into some kind of G-code that the machine can understand. And to do that, there are a plethora of different programs out there. I'm using Lightburn, which is really convenient. It does cost some money, though. I'm right now still on the 30-day trial, but after that, it's like 40 bucks. But I think it's really worth it compared to all the other options. It just is way more complete and has a lot of functionality. There are also like plugins for Inkscape and a whole bunch of different standalone programs that you can play around with if you don't want to spend any money on the software. And inside of uh, that software, you can then either use an image and convert it to like a grayscale image, or you can use vector files to create your different cuts and engravings. The only other thing that you have to make sure is that the program you're using actually supports the kind of cheat code that your machine needs. If you're gonna go the fan pin header route, then you need a program that spits out M106 commands for the laser to turn on. And if you're, for example, using the smoothie board, then you need the power commands. So the S behind the command, it needs to be between zero and one. Whereas with the fan header, the PWM signal is between zero and 255. So that's just some like little differences where you have made to make sure that the program you're using supports the kind of G-code that your controller needs. So enough talking for now, let's take a look at what this laser can actually do. And I've already laid out some of the stuff here and I'm gonna show you some B-roll. And of course it can cut paper, like that's no big surprise, like a very cheap two and a half watt laser can easily cut paper. Uh, it can cut paper really fast, Basically, the only limit is how fast you can accelerate the printhead. Now, the laser unit is not all that heavy compared to like other 10 watt lasers, but it still is significantly heavier than just the extruder, so you can't go all that fast. I basically wouldn't recommend going past like 2000 millimeters per minute uh, for just a simple 3D printer. But besides paper, it can also cut, of course, like stuff like cardboard, but also wood. I made this like whole test piece here where I tried out a whole bunch of different recipes to cut out. And what I noticed is that the kind of power and the amount of passes that you need heavily depends on what kind of plywood you're using. If you're just using some very cheap, not so dense wood, then you're gonna be cutting a lot faster. And I was able to go through like, three to four millimeters in one pass, uh, maybe like 180 millimeters per minute. That is quite impressive actually. And taking that to another level, I was able to cut or almost cut this 10 millimeter piece of wood. Now this took like five passes and a little bit slower speed, but the only basically limiting factor is that at some point you're just gonna run into the problem where the laser needs to go too far down and it's just gonna get blocked by the sides and not really reach the full power on the bottom. Another problem with that is the focus point. The laser isn't nicely parallel in a thin point, but instead it comes has a lens that you can twist to change the focus point. So in one small point, it's gonna be at maximum power and that's perfect for engraving and everything. But that point is only in one point, so if you have a piece of wood that is maybe 5 millimeters thick, that focus point can only be in one spot. That's why making multiple passes is actually sometimes better than just putting more power into it, because you can move the focus point. But the other problem is that if you go really far down, then the thin slot at the top is going to block some of the laser light. and make basically burn up the slot in the top to make it and make it wider and not get all the power to the bottom. That's why you can't go much more than like maybe like eight millimeters in plywood. But you can not only cut wood, you can also really nicely cut acrylics. And that is actually like something that's really fun. The recipe I got, I took a, a few a bit faster passes, but you can also go slower. So this one I made, I think, four or five passes. Uh, it's like four millimeters thick, 
but if you decrease the speed you could probably also get by with like two passes. The only thing you have to make sure with acrylics is that it will not work with clear acrylic. If it is perfectly see-through then the laser is just gonna go through and not do anything. Like you can stay in one spot for forever with the focus point perfectly aimed but with 10 watts it's just not gonna do anything. But what I've noticed is that even just a slight bit of dirt or a scratch or some top will actually make it burn a little bit. But if you want to cut the... But if you want to cut it then you're gonna have to have something darker. This transparent red one worked quite well as it is basically the opposite to the blue laser and very very similar to the goggles actually. But other things that will work very well are opaque uh, acrylics uh, and maybe even white will work in that case. But other stuff like black will work great. Engraving also works very well on those as you can see here and that goes really quickly as well. One big thing that you have to keep in mind though with cutting wood and acrylics is that it smells bad. All that material that was there where you're gonna cut, like it doesn't melt away, it doesn't flow away, it doesn't get go away in chips, it gets vaporized. So all the material from the cut is gonna be in the air. What that means is you have to have some kind of ventilation or filtration system. Either you need to enclose your printer or laser cutter and have a really good filter system to filter out all that or you need to somehow exhaust all of that outside. Now I tried to build a kind of an enclosure and have some filter with just some carbon filters that I had laying around and while it did help a little bit it was more of a hassle and it didn't really work out. What I settled on more mostly was just having all the windows open in the room making sure that there's ample fresh air coming in and that kind of was okay but I will have to find out some better solution for the future. Like some kind of way to properly enclose it and exhaust the air outside would be the best way to go about it. Now where it gets interesting is with metal. Now I tried out a 2.5 watt laser once and basically whatever I was doing I couldn't even make a mark on an anodized aluminum part. And while with 10 watts you still aren't gonna make a lot of metal parts or engrave a whole bunch of stuff into it. I was able to mark the bottom of this anodized uh, part. It is very thin anodizing so I was able to burn it up and but it still took a long time. Just like this one line of text with maybe like 10 characters took almost an hour and it is rather faint. I tried the same thing on this black anodized part but it didn't work at all. It, anodizing is probably just too thick. So in a pinch on a lightly anodized part it will work but if you want to really do more anodized engraving then you might want to look towards the CO2 laser. Or one thing that endurance lasers is also advertising on the website is that you can combine up to three of those laser units and focus them in one point which is then probably going to allow you to engrave on anodized aluminum and other metals a lot better. But for cutting that of course is not going to work since it's coming from many different angles and it can't go down into a cut. With engraving wood uh, it is actually really interesting. It also depends a lot on the kind of wood that you have, how dark you can get. On this part for example it's again this like super cheap not very dense uh, plywood and it would just vaporize the wood and before it got really dark. So this is basically the darkest I was able to get. But using the grayscale functionality with combined with PWM I was able to get some very, very nice uh, engravings uh, in this part of a little bit denser plywood. Um, it took a couple tries to dial it in but what I settled on was like was 0 to 12 percent power for the grayscale image at around 500 millimeters per minute. Now that 500 millimeters per minute mark is actually almost never reached since 
using the fan pins, every time it changes the intensity of the laser, it has to send a dedicated line of G code, which does slow down the controller quite a bit. So it kind of stops at every point and I use quite a high resolution for this part here. I believe it's done at 0.1 or 0.15 millimeters, but only this small skull here took like almost 45 minutes to engrave, which is a long time. And during that time, although I had it set to like 500 millimeters per minute, it was probably only moving at like around 100, since it stops all the time, the acceleration just never gets up to speed. The only reason why I don't set it to like 2000 is I tried that at first and sometimes it has like a longer path where it can get up to speed and if you set it too fast then in these parts it's not gonna get dark enough since it doesn't really calculate the acceleration into how much power it has to send out. So let's come to a conclusion. Now this laser at 600 bucks is rather expensive, so it really needs to be the right choice for you. Now a CO2 laser is a lot more than 600 bucks, but if you're just gonna be able to do some hobby things with it and you wanna do more, then maybe spending the 600 bucks is not really worth it. But depending on what you wanna do, you just have to select your power output accordingly. If what you're gonna be mainly doing is engraving wood and acrylics, then you don't need 10 watts. Like, you can easily get by with like four or even two watt laser and you can engrave all you want and it's gonna be a lot cheaper. If, however, you wanna get into some cutting, then you do need the 10 watts at least. And while the 10 watt laser is gonna allow you to cut plywood out into whatever shape you want and cut some acrylics, it's not gonna be the nicest and sharpest cut. You're not gonna make very detailed uh, model sets with it and compete with other CO2 laser parts because it just kind of is this weird in-between thing. It is priced almost like it is wants to be on the high end, the prosumer market or the professional market, but on the sa at the same time, it still is more this like hobbyist part that you put onto your 3D printer and play around with it. Another thing that you have to keep in mind though is that a CO2 laser takes a lot of space. And if you're limited in space, then maybe adding this laser to your 3D printer is gonna allow you to get into laser cutting and engraving without having to have an extra machine because you might already have your 3D printer and uh, doesn't take up any extra space. So in the end, you're gonna have to decide for yourself if this is right for you. I for sure am gonna continue to play around with it as I think it's really fascinating and it kinda makes me want to have a CO2 laser but that's not in the budget or the room. So that's it for this video. Huge thanks for watching. You can subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff down below. Check out Endurance Lasers. They graciously sent over this laser unit to test out. And they have a whole bunch of stuff on their website that you can check it out. So thanks for watching and until next time.